Hi, George here. And whether you're a small business or maybe you have a photographic editing side hustle or you're just a hobbyist, you may run into a situation where you want to batch process your photos. You know, do several photos at one time to save you a lot of time and effort. And you can do some batch processing here inside of Photoshop Elements. It's actually very easy to do. We'll use this folder right here with these pictures and I'll demonstrate how the batch processing is done. Just go over here. Here's the program. Right now I'm working in Photoshop Elements 2025, but the same thing works for earlier versions as well. No difference. You find it up here under File and come down to Process Multiple Files. Click on that. And that brings up the Process Multiple Files. This is your batch processing area right here. Now, before we get into this, if you want to learn a lot more about how to use Adobe's Photoshop Elements program, then the easiest way to do that is by using my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. And I have different versions of the course for different versions of the program. You can find all of that on my How To Gurus website. And I go through and show you everything about how to use the program, all the tools, all the menus, all the panels, everything, making it very easy to learn how to use this. The way I've set my channel up and the way I've set my training up is that my training gives you all of the basics on how to use the program. And then I give you practice projects here on my YouTube channel. So if you haven't seen my training yet, I'll put a link right down there at the top of the description. And it really is, in my opinion, the best way to learn this program. Okay, back here to the batch processing. Again, process multiple files. This is in several different sections in here. And your first section right up here is to choose where your pictures come from. You can either choose a folder or open files. I don't have any files open right now, so I'll just be using folder. So I'll do a search for the folder, and that's our source right here. Click and browse. And mine's on my C drive right down here. And if I scroll down a little bit, I have a projects folder right there. That's my source folder. If your folder has subfolders, you can choose to look in those folders as well if you want to. And then you can choose a destination. You could use the same folder as you're working in. I don't recommend that. It's better if you go to a different folder just for safety's sake so you don't accidentally overwrite any of your images. Let's just delete this. There we go. And then browse. We'll come down here. Here's my projects folder right here. And I want to make a new folder. Now let's give this one a name of PNG files. That's the one I want. Choose OK. Any files will now be placed inside of our new folder right here. Now I named it PNG files because one of our options here is to convert the file type. All of our images are JPEGs, so we'll convert those over to PNG files. Okay, next down here, if you want to, you can rename the files. It's up to you. They can choose several different ways in here to name your files. You can choose document name, or number serial, letter serial, month and date, extension, or none. If you want to use your own name in here, just select over this and put in your name. Let's just call this one my and a space, files and a space. And you can see how it's going to look right down here. When you move away, it's going to say none up there. And we're then tagging on a three digit serial number up here and a starting serial number. In this case, though, I'll just stick with the document name and leave it that way. Right now, they're set for a Windows compatibility, which is what I'm running this on. But you also can add in Mac and Unix compatibility. This will just do things to make sure that the file name, whatever it is, will be usable on these other systems. I don't really care, so I'll just do mine as Windows. Right down here, we can resize our images. This is very useful if you have a specific size that you need. Notice right now that our width and height are locked together. That's what this little thing is here. And that's our constrained proportions. Resolution of 150 dots per inch or pixels per inch. You can adjust this if you want to, so we can resize our images. Let's just set these for 300 pixels per inch. You don't want to have these at about three inches wide. So if our resolution is 300 dots per inch, DPI, which it basically is pixels. So if I have this at 900 pixels wide, this is going to be about three inches wide. Down here, we can convert our files. So we'll be converting these over into PNG files right there. There we go. And it's not a bad idea to go ahead and click on log errors that result from processing files. In case you run into a problem, you can take a look at this log and see if you can identify where the problem happened. Maybe go back and fix that. Okay, right hand side, a few things in here. We can do an auto levels, auto contrast, auto color, and sharpen. These are all the quick fixes up here from quick, and they're pretty good. I prefer doing these things manually, but sometimes you're in a hurry. So you want to get things done quickly, and these can work out fairly well. I normally will not do sharpen. They can give you odd results on an auto setting. But I found the auto levels works out pretty well in most cases, and auto color is pretty good. So I'll go ahead and I'll choose those two, just a little bit of cleanup. 
We can add two different kinds of labels onto our images, either a watermark onto the image, or you can add in a caption. And the caption, file name, description, and date modified are available. Or a watermark, we'll place it right onto the image. Just type in your text right here. Let's just say my watermark just said George. I can do that. You can then position that bottom left, centered or bottom right. I happen to like bottom right. Choose your typeface, your font size, the opacity 50%, and here's the color. It would then put George on all of those images. I'm not going to bother with that, though. Let's just go ahead and do a caption instead. I'll do file name, description, and date modified so you have that information in here. Okay, once you have all of your options set, go ahead and choose OK. It will then process all those images. And you'll watch the processing going on right now. And it's pretty fast about this, as you can see in here. It's making the adjustments in each one of those files. We had about 12 images, I think. We'll let this finish off. And we'll check out the results when this is all done. Okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and see how this worked. File and open. And here's our project folder. There's a the new PNG files. And there we go. You can see we have the data information in here. Let's just, this is a larger preview. There it goes. So it's added in the date information for us right down here as we asked it to in the file name. Notice that I kept the original file name in here, but it also added in a number for us. These are all now PNG files, as you can see, right over there. And they've all been resized so that the width is at the three inch size. And they're all now also the 300 dots per inch. And right down here, I'll open up this text file. We'll do this over in Windows Notepad. Do that in just a second. Let's just open up one of these. Maybe grab this one right here. We should be able to read that. Choose open. There we go. Here's our image. And again, here is the caption that we placed on these. And that's an option. Let's check our image and resize image size. There's our width at three inches. That's what I wanted. Here's a resolution, 300 pixels per inch. That's correct. Width is 900. That's what we set. So it has resized that image properly. Let's now take a look at the log file that was set up. I'll bring that up. And it's right over here. And there we go. Start processing multiple files and end processing multiple files. Nothing in between there. So no errors happened in that processing. So there you go. Quite a few things you can do to process multiple files here. All of these different options. You don't have to use any or all of these. I could choose to have nothing on the labeling, for instance, then we wouldn't have that on the image. I could choose to not do the quick fix, that's okay, or not do the renaming. So you can do any or all of what we have in here. The only thing that you have to do up here is choose your source and choose your destination. And again, I always recommend to choose a destination that is separate from your source. And like I showed you here, to set up a new file folder as you're doing that makes it real easy. And again, if you want to learn a lot more about how to use the Photoshop Elements program, take a look at the link at the top of the description for my complete training courses. Make sure you like this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe as well. And I'll see you next time.